Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. Welcome to another DraftKings Week 1 video for NFL DFS. Right here, I've got my top stacks for Week 1. I'm going to go over five of my favorite stacks for this week uh, and all the tournaments and GPPs that are out there. If you don't know, you need to know now and you should have watched my video on how to be better and build better lineups in uh, large field tournaments. We're going to stack. We're going to double stack with those quarterbacks. And I'm going to walk you through on the Roto Grinders lineup builder and their lineup HQ to show you kind of how to build those stacks out. You don't have to use my top five stacks. I could be wrong about any of these, but no matter who you're playing at quarterback in tournaments, you should be stacking, you should be double stacking, you should be playing a player on the way back from the other team. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Subscribe to the channel, ring that notifications bell. If you're coming back, you know the rules. I need 10% likes per uh, views. So if we get 5,000 views on this video, I need 500 likes. If we get 10,000 views on this video, I need 1,000 likes. So drop a like on the video, support, uh, the people that support us, I'm going to get to that right after this, but let's just go with the video. Let's go! He's a legend. On this Top Stacks video every week, we're going to be highlighting rotogrinders.com and the Roto Grinders lineup HQ on how to build stacks and everything that goes along with that. You can get in with a five-day package for NFL only. That'll take you through the Thursday night football game, the Sunday main slate early and late if you want to play those as well, the Sunday night showdown slate, and the Monday night slate. That's a whole lot of value for that $25 five-day, and then you can choose to continue it if you like. Use uh, promo code smizzle.tv slash roto grinders it'll be right down below in the pinned comment if you wanted to see the links and discounts to every other site that we're affiliated with click show more on the description which will also give you a link to tiltify to try and help raise money for no kid hungry this is our big fundraiser this season we're already well over a thousand dollars raised we are trying to raise twenty five thousand dollars by the end of the nfl season for every $5,000 that you guys raise up to $25,000, I will be matching. So hopefully, if we can get to $25,000 raised as a community, I will add $25,000 on top of that to No Kid Hungry. One in six kids are at risk of hunger in America, and that just shouldn't be it. We're as prosperous a country as we are. So give just a little bit. If you are playing Daily Fantasy, you've got a couple extra dollars to throw over at No Kid Hungry, and every single dollar helps, no matter how big or how small the donation, every little bit helps. So be a part of something bigger than yourself. Go help out the kids. First quarterback that I want to talk about on today's video is Kyler Murray. Guys, he's really, really good. Through 10 weeks last season, he played nine games. Through those 10 games, or through those 10 weeks in those nine games, he was the quarterback one of all time. No quarterback ever through 10 weeks had averaged more fantasy points per game or scored more fantasy points per game than Kyler Murray. Then he sustained that shoulder injury. They didn't run him as much in the second half of the season. He was not as accurate throwing the ball or not efficient throwing the ball because of the lingering effects of that shoulder injury. He's had nine months to recover, and he looks like he is absolutely back where he was before. Uh, this game has a total over 50 points between them and Tennessee. On the road, Tennessee has been a very friendly defense to attack, and they added weapons in that offense to use with Kyler. So, uh, Nook Hopkins, we know how good he's been. We know how much uh, volume he gets. Great place to start with a stacking group. Uh, they brought in A.J. Green, another great player. Uh, historically, might not be what he was when he was younger, but he is not priced uh, anywhere that you're going to have to pay a whole lot to get him at 3800 The rookie, Rondale Moore, who they brought in, is only $3,000. Uh, if you want to go with Christian Kirk, uh, with the depth here, or if you wanted to go with a absolute Hail Mary play with Andy Isabella, I wouldn't recommend it, or at least not having a large allocation in your tournament uh, plays this weekend. If you're building more than one lineup, if you're building one, you're definitely not going to have Isabella. If you're building 150, I still don't think you should have him, but he would be in that group. The guys that I would focus on here are Hopkins and more to stack with Murray with sprinkling in a little bit of AJ Green. The next stack that we're going to go, these are in alphabetical order, guys. This is not one, two, three, four, five. Okay, bear with me. I'll just put them in alphabetical order to keep it simple. Uh, Matt Ryan on the Atlanta Falcons. Great game environment here, playing in Atlanta against Philly uh, and as susceptible as they've been to the pass in the past. And we have a very consolidated tree of targets that uh, where the ball should be going when Matt Ryan lets it go. Now, volume does not have as much of an effect uh, on quarterback scoring as efficiency does. But... When you are efficient and you throw the ball as often as Matt Ryan does, 36, 38, 39, 37, 40, 42, 
uh, you have the capability of if he is efficient on that day, and Philly is a team defensively that teams have been efficient against, of topping 30 DraftKings points. You can see he did it a couple times last year, multiple games over 25 as well, and on top of those 30 plus point games. Uh, and as I said, a very consolidated target tree of individuals that he's going to throw to, basically being Ridley and Gage uh, and the tight end Kyle Pitts. You can build your groups and stack one to two of these. I'm probably not going to triple stack, and I'm going to bring it back with somebody on Philadelphia in that game. Josh Allen, the QB1 from last season because Kyler got hurt. He puts up fantastic numbers, has amazing ability throwing the ball, we saw him take a massive leap in terms of his efficiency in 2020. Whether or not he can sustain that in 2021 is yet to be seen. But if they throw it as often as they threw it, and then when they get inside the five-yard line, they let Josh Allen run it as much as they allowed Josh Allen to run it last year with nine rushing touchdowns on the year, his ceiling is basically top-notch in the league. Uh, 37 points, 36 points. 25, 39, 34, 40, 35, 35. Those are tournament winning weeks. On the other side of those passes, we kind of know where the ball's going to go. Steph Diggs, the American hero, is where most of those targets are going to be aimed at, or most of those attempts are going to be targeted. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see about Cole Beasley. He's removed from the COVID list. He's got to be on the list based on how many uh, attempts he gets per game. Uh, Manny Sanders going to be lined up on the outside there. We also have less tight ends this year as they got rid of a couple. So if you wanted to go with the Dawson Knox on the random tight end that Josh Allen throws a touchdown to whenever they get inside the 10-yard line, I'm fine including him in the group for a long shot play. Uh, Gabriel Davis is 3,400. More of a longer shot than one of these top three guys. This is where the majority of his targets are going to go. Joe Burrow stacks and double stacks with as much as they throw the ball in Cincinnati. Um, we're going to have to hope that this game plays closer rather than Minnesota getting out to a big lead. If Minnesota gets out to a big lead, they're going to bleed clock. They're going to run it. They're going to uh, limit the amount of plays that Cincinnati can run. Uh, and if the Bengals can protect Burrow, the double stacks with him are just very, very juicy. The ball is going to go to three places. Regardless of what you think about Jamar Chase and his case of the yips through the preseason, the ball's going to get thrown his way. Whether or not he receives it is a whole other problem. The ball's going to go to Tyler Boyd. The ball's going to go to Jamar Chase. And T. Higgins is going to be an extremely popular player because of his price, plus expected volume in spite of the tough matchup against Minnesota and their cornerbacks. Uh, this is where the ball is going to go most often. If you wanted to include uh, Uzoma or Sample in your stack group, that's fine with me too. But this is the majority of these guys stacking one or two of them with Burrow is going to be the way. And oh yeah, how could I do a stacks video in week one without mentioning the most obvious quarterback, albeit a very pricey option, but you can get there considering how much value is on the board here in week one is Patrick Mahomes. I don't need to spend very much time talking to you about the Kansas City offense and Patrick Mahomes. I'm not going to include a running back with any of these stacks. I would include a running back in like a Carolina stack or a New Orleans stack considering how much of uh, the target market share CMC and Camara get, but unless you're getting like 18% or 17% plus projectable targets from a quarterback, from a running back, I'm going to keep my groups to basically wide receiver, tight end, only pass catchers in my group. So CEH does not qualify there. Uh, Tyreek Hill qualifies here. Kelsey qualifies here. That's where most of my Mahomes stacks are going to go uh, this week. If you wanted to throw Hardman in the group, I don't disagree with that. If you wanted to throw Robinson or Pringle in the group, I don't disagree with that as well. So let's take a look over at the Roto Grinders lineup builder. You can see my best buys are included uh, in their lineup builder that they have. We've highlighted the five quarterbacks that we talked about. Uh, you go right over here to team player groups. You build these stacks out. Arizona, here's my wide receiver group for these. You can set what you want. They will update uh, the P.own, which is the roster percentage that they believe that those players are going to be. I've set my player group to use exactly two players, right? I'm going to apply this to all team groups. I just want to double stack all of my quarterbacks, uh, at least in my first run of making lineups. Uh, and it's going to pick two from this group of wide receivers. It's going to shuffle them. It's going to make the do whatever you set the lineup builder to do. But that's how you build those groups out. Ryan, this is how these groups start. I kind of cultivated that Murray group first. So it shows you all of the players that are on his team. We're going to X out the running backs. We're going to keep Hayden Hurst in there. We're going to keep Kyle Pitts in there. 
We're going to X out Pitts, X out Patterson, uh, Zacchaeus, sure. Darby, no. Sharp, no. Uh, and we're going to have a heavy focus on probably Ridley, Gage, and Pitts through that group. Going over to Allen, same sort of thing. Not going to include the running backs at all. Probably not going to include Sweeney. I'll keep Knox in there just because of the random Josh Allen touchdown that goes to a, a tight end pretty much every week of his career. This would be my group here uh, for my first initial run. Go to the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to keep this one extremely small. Joe Mixon's right there on the cusp uh, of players that I would accept. Uh, I'm going to keep this basically to just the three main pass catchers on that group. And then we go down to Mahomes. Same sort of thing. Pass catchers only in these groups. Uh, X out Kelsey for whatever reason, by accident. So we'll find him back. We'll add him to the group. Uh, not going to use Fountain. We'll keep Hardman, Robinson. Not going to keep Fortson, Pringle. There's my group. Going to use two in every single one. We'll run that lineup group and see what we get. And hopefully you guys can make that lineup builder dance. Whether you're building uh, to choose your best 20 lineups out of or whether you're going to max center something for 150 in the, you know, the mini max games, the nickel, dime, 25 cent games. I would highly suggest you try them if you wanted to try and become a max enter, a mass multi-entry player. Get in at the cheapest price, learn your craft, work through the lineup builder and learn to make it jump for you. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Bye. He's a legend.